Hi, I'm Annie Botticelli, and this is the Storyteller Forecast for Leo for September 2015. Go to my website, aspiritualspark.com, or click on the link below this video to see more about my current offerings and also to sign up for my free email newsletter, which makes you part of my community and comes with all kinds of perks. So what do we have going on in this wild eclipse season? September, we've got Venus retrograde to deal with. We've got Mercury retrograde to work with. We've got lunar and solar eclipses that are happening, bringing all kinds of changes, radical transformation. So let's just take this all piece by piece. If you've been listening to my horoscopes in the recent months, it has been very much focused on Venus retrograde. Venus retrograde happens once every 18 months for about four months, the influence, the actual transit is about seven or so weeks, but we have over about or over a month of shadow period beforehand. We have about a month of shadow period afterwards. So it's just this long period of time where the planet that rules love, beauty and money and design and harmony and aesthetics is going backwards. So I made a special video called Venus Retrograde. You can search for it on my channel, Annie Botticelli, Venus Retrograde. I highly recommend you watch it because there's so many big and little details that I go into in that video that I'm not gonna have time to deal with because we have to deal with the eclipses. So you definitely wanna watch that because there are certain major do's and major don'ts and major what do I do if I have to do what I'm not supposed to do um, advice there. Okay. So Venus goes direct on September 6th, but since its shadow period lasts through October 9th, the whole month of September is covered in Venus retrograde. So going backwards with things with love and money and business and design things. The, the focus is on the past, not in bringing new things in the future. It's not a time to commit to something or make a life altering decision that is permanent in any way. This is a huge theme for this month because Mercury retrograde also brings the same lessons. So Mercury goes retrograde on September 17th. Its shadow period started on August 29th and Mercury goes retrograde September 17th through October 8th. Then the post shadow period lasts until um, October 24th. So once again, we've got this retrograde covering the whole month of September. Then we've got the solar eclipse at 20 degrees of Virgo on September 13th. Solar eclipses are, are ones that occur on a new moon and they're like a new moon times three. So the energy of newness and new beginnings and new chapters and new windows flying open, fresh new energy opening up times three in the eclipse time. And the eclipse time is not just on the time when the eclipse is happening. The eclipses have a huge range of time and huge stories and umbrellas and sub umbrellas. They're very complex to follow. So we've got about six weeks before the actual eclipse, which is around the beginning of August, you could start to get inklings or energy or news from that solar eclipse. Sometimes we get the news early or pieces start to come in early. September 27th, we have the lunar eclipse at four degrees of Aries. Again, this is like a full moon in triplicate. So lunar eclipses happen on the full moon and it's like the fullness, the emotional shaking off, the, the endings, the completions, the goodbyes of a full moon times three. And again, we can feel that up to six weeks before. So you might have started to get in news related to this eclipse in the middle of August or thereabouts. The theme is part of a sub theme of the eclipse because we've got two polarities of eclipses at play at this eclipse time. We still have carryovers and closing into further completion of the Aries Libra polarity that has been happening since 2013. That last eclipse will happen in spring of 2016. So Aries, me versus we. Um, and very strongly, specifically for Leo, my stuff versus our stuff is very highlighted, which we're going to go into more detail. But this energy of, of me and we and how they're at odds and how they're in synergy has been the story of this uh, since 2013. And if you think back to between 2004 and 2006, the breakups, the makeups, the almost breakups, the separations, the new relationships, the redefinition to self, the, all of that that was going on then was from those eclipses. And now we're having a similar theme where you're moving into a further state of evolution over this time 
of what your space is, who you are individually, who you are in relationship, where that matches, where it doesn't match, where there's antagonism, and how you can further hold your space of your individual truth while you're in relationship and cooperation with other people. That's really the lesson of this series of eclipses. So we have that all going on. Then we have the solar eclipse at 20 degrees of Virgo, bringing in this new energy. And this is the second of the eclipses that started in the spring, and they run through 2017 of the Pisces Virgo eclipse umbrella. And Pisces Virgo is very much about chaos versus order, formlessness versus form, um, deep emotional esoteric things versus very mundane, organized, structured things. So the, the story there. So there's, there's a big picture that's going on that's going to continue of, to evolve over the years, but we've got this event happening in this fall, and then there's about a four to six month window where it's super strong in the effects and fruition from this event. So there's all these things, all these layers that are going on, and they're all part of other stories. But one of the, the big stories that's being opened up here is something about your self-sufficiency. When there's a solar eclipse in the second house, as most Leos are going to experience this energy either directly in the second house or close enough to be very affecting, very much affecting the second house, this new energy, new opening is in the second house. So everything related to the second house is what is going to be new and open. For some of you, this is going to be new streams of income. Some of you, this is going to be new self-sufficiency on just an emotional level, having nothing to do with finances. The lunar eclipse is happening for many of you in the eighth house, which is the house of our stuff, marital stuff, marital money, um, spousal money, family money, inheritances, sweepstakes, um, loans, um, funding from someone else. It's called other people's money. So there's this closing of energy in someone else's or shared money and this opening up in your individual money. So for a lot of people, that's gonna look like just a clear description, like a divorce, where the, the, the joint finances you had are now separating and your individual su sufficiency is what is being focused on. Some of you are going to have someone um, leave you money and that's their, their passing from the, the, the completion um, that come because sometimes when eclipses come and they, they end something, sometimes it's actually that a person passes. You know, there there's a lot of death energy that's involved in eclipses, but only sometimes is it literal death where somebody actually passes away. Um, and the rest of the time it's like a figurative death, a dying or completion of something that's less tangible. But because this is happening in the eighth house, the energy of inheritances is very strong. So it could be someone that's close to you or it could be someone that's not close to you. Eclipses affect different people differently depending on where in your natal chart the events are happening. So if you have one or both of these eclipses happening right on one of your planets or in a critical angle to one of your planets or right on one of the angles in your chart or in a, in a critical, yeah, well, on one of the angles, because if it's on one of the angles, it's going to affect all the angles. So if you have that going on, you're going to be rocked to the core, and you're gonna have major crazy change in your life. Some people are going to experience the eclipses through other people, where there's a lot going on for somebody close to someone, but maybe you're the person that's holding space for them. We don't really know, without seeing your chart, if you're going to be the one that's holding space, or if you're going to be the one that's having huge changes. So in any case, you could be having huge changes that come from watching someone else, but that could be a more diluted experience compared. There are many people that go through eclipses and it's like, ah, nothing really notable happened and that depends on where the placement is in your chart. So in any case, this energy of self-sufficiency and money for, for some of you is just gonna mean more money, more chance to make money, more ways to earn money. And some of you is going to be a new way of looking at the value of things, which might involve having less money uh, by choice or by circumstance and where you choose to value something other than money. Um, and that could be many different stories of what that looks like, but, but the question of values comes up in a new way of looking at things. 
If you're a person that has children and you're having to make a choice between having two incomes for the family, which will bring more money, or a choice between staying home, one of the parents or both of the parents part-time staying home with the kids, then you might choose to make less money so that that value of being with the kids is satisfied, you know? So it's different things for different people at different times. One of the beautifully refreshing things that has blessed my life by studying astrology is that the judgments that we often have on people doing things that seem different from what we value or what we're in resonance with, if you really study astrology, especially from a spiritual perspective, that starts to dissolve away because you can see in charts that people are really supposed to be experiencing different things at different times. And the second house is, like every house in astrology, has this wide spectrum of possible experience. So like the energy of, a, of a, I think about Texas. Texas in the United States is a state that's really big and it's you know very focused on uh, gasoline, right, oil, and, um, and, and cows, uh, cattle and beef and just big things, everything being really big. If you ever drive through, then you'll see what, what I'm talking about. So, and of course, there's so many people there that aren't focused on those things, and, and there's no judgment either way. But if you, if you pick um, just kind of like the epitome of that, where there's like a gas guzzling big truck, you know, with a person who is eating a lot of beef, and that, and that is maybe in their chart, that's the experience they're supposed to be having. And then you get another person who is like, has a, a hybrid car and they barely use any gas and they're vegan and they're all of these other things. Both of those things could really be strong second house representations because the second house is also very much sustainability and looking at things from the earth perspective. But the second house also has to do with money and the, the excess of money and the spending and splurging and really enjoying the sensual appetites that you can be afforded with a bunch of money. So those energies are actually all very Taurian in nature. It's just different ways of manifesting them because of someone's individual preference at the time or because of their soul's path. So how you're going to experience this opening up, it could be that you've had a lot of restrictions in your finances and now you step into where like gluttony is your experience. And maybe you might judge yourself or someone else might judge that but it's not really anyone's place to. This is something that's opening up as part of an experience that's going to be of value to you. Maybe you have been gluttonous with um, money and energy and now you're going into more of an ascetic type of energy that's sustainable and focusing on sustainability. Both of those are equal possible manifestations for a person's soul. And that could be happening all at the same time. So that's what's really opening up. So the rest of you who aren't having the lunar eclipse close out energy within relationship or relationship with money, you're going to be having the lunar eclipse happen in your ninth house. And the ninth house is the house of ideals and belief systems and organized religion and uh, studies of spiritual things that aren't organized. So many of you then will have this eclipsing out of a way of looking at things. Um, I often will hear someone have a very strong belief on food related things, either, you know, like I said, where they're a vegan and they turn into, you know, a paleo person or they're a meat eater and they turn into a vegan, you know, whatever this looks like, there's no judgment on it, but there's a belief system that gets eclipsed out that opens you up into a whole new focus on second house stuff. So that's going to be happening very strong. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how it manifests for you. So let's see. Um, I Okay, yeah, I wanted to talk about the fact that this isn't the time to launch things. This is, I've been talking about this, but I wanna make it very clear. If part of this new energy opening up involves you starting a new business, and that's perhaps the way the second house is coming in for you, don't start your new business in September. Wait until, if you can, the end of October to do that because you're not going to have the full power of the astrological energy behind you in September, first of all. Second of all, things can happen and change on a dime where you're heading in a certain way and then the eclipse news comes in and it sets you in a, a totally different way. So you don't want to launch things, you don't want to commit to things, you don't want to put too many things in motion. It's a time to respond to what happens, not to initiate action. 
So save your launches till the end of October. It's like, this is what I always think about when I think about this energy is if you're on a deserted island and you made a boat and you are trying to get off the island, you were, you were shipwrecked there somehow, you would wait till the tide was going out to bring you further into wherever it is you're going. You wouldn't try to paddle your boat out when the tide is coming in. That would be silly, it's silliness. And that is why we study astrology. That is why astrology is useful. I don't practice astrology for the purpose of um, just telling you what's going to happen because I feel like that's disempowering to you to cultivate looking to someone else to tell you what is going to happen and then being at the mercy of what's going to happen. I'm telling you so that you're aware of the energy so that you can take an active role in your destiny and that you can use the energies and the awarenesses to create your best possible life. So you want to launch your boats when the tide is going out and when you understand the natural rhythms at play with these astrological transits, then you're in a better position to bring the things out into the world that you were here to bring out. So I hope that you have a wonderful September. If you would like some assistance, go to my website, aspiritualspark.com or click on the link below this video and you can see more about my personal coaching. Also, you can see more about my 28 day virtual coaching program called Shine, which has 28 videos and 28 podcasts all for each day in a moon cycle, which it takes to make new habits. And it will take you deep on a journey of clearing out the blocks that are interfering with you, bringing your brilliance into the world. And that's available in a sliding scale. And you can check out my Unleash Your Money Magnet webinar, which is two hours of solid, awesome, information that helps you to launch into your next experience of finances. And it sounds like a lot of you are ripe and ready for that, whatever that looks like. And, um, and sign up for my free email newsletter. So have a wonderful month. I'll see you soon.